Just like I predicted yesterday, the National Hurricane Center is now outlining two areas where tropical cyclone development is now possible. We have this one area that's a little bit further westward and another area that's a little bit closer to the African coast. And while the chance is currently low based on the National Hurricane Center's forecast, you have to keep in mind that this is within the um, neck only within the next seven days and the chance um, seems to be a lot higher beyond the seven day mark once this really get potentially gets close to the Caribbean as um, all the most reliable computer models are agreeing that we're going to see a tropical storm in the main development region which makes me believe that we're likely to see tropical storm Emily develop um, either late this week or into early next week since the computer models just been very persistent on that idea which shows that there's likely validity to that um, to that forecast that we're going to see a tropical storm um, by as early as this week. So the Caribbean, you definitely need to be aware of this at this time. The National Hurricane Center is now at least acknowledging the possibility and I expect this chance to definitely rise over the next several days. Here's a look at the current water vapor imagery just off the African coast and we do see a new tropical wave has just come off the African coast and while this first area of convective activity isn't expected to develop it's the one behind it that definitely has a much higher possibility of developing I'll give it potentially right around a moderate chance we do see that there's plenty of convection surrounding this um, tropical waves. So of course, once it moves over the very warm um, Atlantic waters, we're only going to see that convective activity increase, even if we're going to see a pocket of dry air just so west of it. It seems like the computer models are leaning to, um, to, um, towards the fact that there's going to have enough moisture for this to develop into a tropical storm. And um, just to the east of this tropical wave, there's another um, tropical wave that's that also has potential of developing. It would move a little bit further northward, so I'll say it's definitely less likely to impact land, but it's definitely something to be aware of over the next several days. Here's what the latest run of the GFS model is forecasting at this time and it's definitely a lot more of a concerning initialization compared to yesterday's run where we do see not only a weak tropical storm but a potentially a very strong tropical storm um, um, right around the main development region where the millibar pressure is hovering around 992 millibars so this could easily be potentially a 60 to 70 mile per hour tropical storm um, right around Around the Saturday time frame so the GFS model does want to strengthen this storm um, relatively rapidly where we do see it organizes itself quite quickly despite the amount of dry air however uh, in the more long-term future the GFS model expects the dry air to be a little bit too much we do see the storm weaken I'll still say it's will it still would be considered tropical storm status at this point of course just not as strong but even if this does weaken a little bit this moisture could still enter the Caribbean and who knows if there's a little bit less dry air than anticipated we could still see a pretty powerful tropical storm in, um, directly impact the Caribbean but at this point it's going to be in the very long term future the storm should move relatively slowly over the next several days because there won't be a strong amount of ridging as it's at, as at one point it's going to deal with weak steering flows because this ridge should weaken and there's going to be this chop that could potentially move south enough to pull this out to sea that would certainly be um, the best case scenario but so has yet to be seen and in this scenario the GFS model is expecting the ridge to be just strong enough to keep this southward and unfortunately impact the Caribbean but what could be even more concerning in the very long term future is that the GFS model re-intensifies this storm system to where we do see a pretty powerful tropical cyclone just off the United States coast but definitely take this with a huge grain of salt I'm going very far out but within a more manageable time Time frame even within the next six seven days we see a powerful tropical storm which definitely makes me concerned potentially for the Caribbean because even if this does weaken as it approaches the Caribbean it's going to be strong enough to where it could handle um, a little bit of weakening and still maintain uh, uh, um, 
at a tropical storm um, status type storm. So that's only something where going to um, keep in mind really all depends on the amount of dry air. Unfortunately, like I've been saying in my previous videos, it does seem like the wind shear is going to be very, um, it's going to be very strong to inhibit this um, tropical cyclone. The main inhibitor would be the dry air, but I'll say at this point, we're more likely to see a tropical storm by late this week into early next week. Here's what the European model is forecasting and the European model also agrees that we're going to see a tropical storm develop in the fairly um, uh, in the very near future where we do see um, but it doesn't um, strengthen as much as a GFS model it's, it remains right around I'll say a week to maybe stronger tropical storm where we do see um, the millibar pressure hover around 998 millibars so it might be around 50 to 60 miles per Per hour when it comes to wind speed at this point however the good news is that with at least the european models current forecast it wants to take this tropical storm northward out to sea so it would avoid the caribbean islands and of course the dry air that's expected to be just to the west of this storm system will keep the storm from rapidly intensifying um where it'll remain a tropical storm um there is a possibility that if the dry air is even just slightly less it could develop into a hurricane because it has a very small um, circulation or that's at least what the computer models are expecting and with uh, and with storm systems that have very small circulation then they tend to do a lot better because the because the air is and energy is more compact over a single area which makes the wind speed increase um, lowers the pressure right around the center of circulation and um, with a smaller circulation it means that the wind field is smaller so it absorbs less dry air surrounding it so if this is able to maintain a more compact structure um, a little bit more than what the european model is currently forecasting right now i wouldn't be surprised that we could see a hurricane but it seems like the dry air will keep it from rapidly intensifying but this still could be a concerning storm in the more long-term future um, but hopefully it's able to move out to sea we do see that there is this trough that digs down that weakens the ridging for this to have an open area to move out to sea let me show you guys a 500 millibar height anomaly to get, get give you guys a better idea of the steering patterns for this storm system so here's a 500 millibar geopotential height anomaly forecast provided from the European model. We do see that initially the main steering flow will be this Bermuda Azores high that should stick around for um, several days before eventually a trough digs down through the northeast that will weaken this ridging right here and only intensifying um, and only intensify the amount of troughing over this area for this to have an open lane to move out to sea as there's not really a strong um, surface level easterly flow that would push this storm towards the Caribbean so this would definitely be the best case scenario however it's far from certain that this trajectory forecast um, will play out because depending on how strong this ridge is if this ridge is a little stronger and if this trough is a little weaker and doesn't dig as far south um, as anticipated then we could easily see this ridge steer it um, straight towards west which would bring more impacts to the caribbean islands but like what the gfs model is currently forecasting um so we're definitely going to need to keep in mind with this trough moving through canada as we approach the later portion of next week as well as this trough that's expected to move in right around the friday time frame in the northeast if it's a little stronger and moves a little bit more south than anticipated then expect a higher chance of storm would move out to sea and avoid any sort of land, um, direct land interactions, which would definitely be the best case scenario. So keep in mind with how um, um, these ridges as well as um, these next few troughs move through the United States. In the GFS models forecast, we see a clear difference. We see that the ridging is definitely a lot stronger. And while there is a decent amount of troughing, it expects another ridge that would be located over the eastern half of the United States right around the August 20th to 21st time frame to move in. And that would prevent um, this storm system from being able to move northward, which would bring more direct impacts to the Caribbean in the long term future. So depending on the position of this ridge um, by late next week into the early next week will play a major role in terms of the track. So definitely pay close attention to this. 
Here's a look at the wind shear forecast and unfortunately it seems like the wind shear is going to be fairly light over the main development region and the strong upper level winds just outside of the center of circulation of this Chalgo wave should enhance um, Chalgo cyclone development since it will al allow a better outflow for more air to rise and the pressure to lower along the surface as is the point I've been making over the past several days um, which is the reason why I do believe tropical storm formation is likely by next week the big question still remains how much dry air there will be and the amount of ridging that will be just to the north of this storm because that could mean the difference between potentially experiencing a hurricane or potentially experiencing just a weak tropical storm or and it could also mean the difference between this directly impacting the Caribbean islands or this just moving out to sea, not really um, bringing much land interactions at all. So we're definitely going to need to pay more close attention to the amount of dry air over the main development region as it continues ahead further eastward as well as the amount of ridging. But the wind shear should remain relatively light and while the wind shear is expected to increase as this um, if this storm system were to move further northward, it won't really matter much by that point because it wouldn't impact land anyway. So the strength wouldn't matter um, that much, even um, even if the wind shear gets that strong. So, um, but if this were to take a track further southward, unfortunately, it would be able to avoid this strong wind shear, which may, which would mean that the Caribbean would experience tropical storm like conditions by early next week. So. Um, keep this in mind very closely and of course taking a look at our second possibility at um of seeing a potential tropical storm we do have um see that the, this but next potential comes off the coast right around the thursday august 17th time frame and it's expected to take a track for northward thanks to a weakness in ridging that would exist thanks to this low pressure system just off the coast of the United Kingdom um, that would allow this storm to take a track for a northward which would certainly be good news as it wouldn't impact any land directly and if it were to move northward this early then it's unlikely that it will have much of a chance of de um, to develop because not only will the dry air um, greatly increase if this were to move further northward but the sea surf temperatures would decrease dramatically which would mean that there would be less convection overall surrounding the storm which means that at least for this um, second potential tropical storm I'll say it's definitely less like um, it's unlikely to impact land directly which is certainly good news but I'm um, still keep tabs on it because you never know the hurricane season as you know could change very quickly here are what the current European ensemble members are forecasting at this time and it's definitely very concerning because we do see a decent amount of ensemble members wanting to develop this not only into a tropical storm but potentially into a hurricane in the more long-term future of course it's still more uncertain right around this point but it at least um show but it's but it's good to at least keep in mind of the possibility that a hurricane could develop out of this tropical cyclone i definitely wouldn't rule out that possibility at all so uh, of course um the caribbean you need to pay close attention to this and um however at least for right now the ensemble members do want to take this out the sea with most of them avoiding the caribbean islands which is certainly good news but the ensemble members at least when it comes to trajectory especially could change their forecast a lot within any given day based um because like i said there's uh, very much in the long-term future and the amount of ridging is still some still has yet to be seen so at least um be um still be aware of this over the caribbean islands because we could see the tracks shift a little bit further westward and even in the united states um you we do see that some of the ensemble members do want to take it towards that general direction so it's um so for the southeast at least be aware of this scenario uh, of this possibility as well in the long-term future the gfs ensemble members are taking a fairly different scenario where they want to take um, the neck um, this potential tropical cyclone well further northward completely avoiding the Caribbean islands which is definitely much different from what the main GFS model is stating however I'll still lean a little bit more towards what the uh, main um, GFS model is stating rather than the ensemble members as I do expect a track that's a little bit further southward and has potential of impacting the Caribbean directly 
So here's my overall forecast when it comes to the potential of Tropical Storm Emily and Franklin. I do believe Tropical Storm Emily is likely at this time, although there's going to be quite a bit of dry air over the main development region based on the current consensus from the computer models. It seems like they're just, um, they have just as much agreement that there's going to be just enough moisture to at least fend off the dry air enough for this to develop a compact center of circulation and for the wind speed to increase along the surface, which means that we likely will We'll see a uh, tropical storm um, somewhere in this area. However, the big question remains where exactly it'll go. Um, it seems like the computer models are leaning just um, towards bringing it just north of the Caribbean islands, but I wouldn't be at all. Um, uh, I wouldn't be surprised at all if we see the storm directly impact the Caribbean at the same time. So definitely um, pay close attention to that possibility. And uh, we could see a future hurricane out of this. And with for the potential tropical storm, Franklin, it, it, I'll say it will have a moderate chance of seeing tropical storm Franklin, but it's unlikely to impact any land since it'll move very far up north, which is certainly good news. But that's it for now, guys. And I thank you guys for watching. Uh, make sure to pay very close attention um, to the hurricane season um, over the next several days because we could um, we, we could be entering a more active phase now.